In 2006, a rancher in Montana uncovered two skeletons locked together in sandstone, a Tyrannosaurus rex, a Triceratops, both perfectly preserved. And here's the kicker. Embedded in the Triceratops skull is a T-Rex tooth that shouldn't be there. For 18 years, legal battles kept this fossil hidden from science. But in 2024, researchers finally got their hands on it. And what they're finding is rewriting everything we thought we knew about dinosaur behavior. Because this isn't just a fossil. It's a crime scene frozen in time for 67 million years. Clayton Phipps had been hunting fossils in the Hell Creek Formation for most of his adult life. Commercial fossil hunting isn't glamorous. You spend days staring at dusty hillsides in 100 degree heat, hoping to spot a fragment of bone that might, if you're lucky, pay the bills. Most days, you find nothing. Some days, you find a tooth. And once in a lifetime, if the universe decides to cut you some slack, you find something that changes paleontology forever. June 2006, Phipps was walking a ridge on the Murray Ranch near Jordan, Montana, when he spotted it. Not a fragment, not a single bone. Two complete skeletons, weathering out of a sandstone hillside, positioned so close together they were practically embracing. One was clearly a ceratopsian. You could see the distinctive frill and beak. The other was a theropod, medium-sized, with those unmistakable serrated teeth. Now, finding one complete dinosaur skeleton is rare. Finding two together is astronomically improbable. Finding them in what appeared to be direct physical contact? That's the kind of discovery that makes paleontologists drop their coffee mugs and book the next flight to Montana. Phipps called them the dueling dinosaurs. The name stuck, even though, spoiler alert, there's a pretty good chance they weren't actually dueling. But we're getting ahead of ourselves. The excavation took months. This wasn't your typical dig where you can isolate bones and wrap them individually. These skeletons were articulated, meaning the bones were still connected in their original positions, and they were intertwined. Separating them would destroy evidence. So Phipps and his team did something audacious. They jacketed the entire hillside. Thousands of pounds of rock, plaster, and bone removed as a single block. It was like trying to move a small house. And then, nothing happened. For years. See, there was a problem. A very American problem. The Murray family owned the surface rights to the land. The grass. The soil. The right to ranch cattle. But another family, the Seversons, owned the mineral rights, the oil, the coal, the valuable stuff underground. When fossils started selling for millions of dollars, the Seversons asked a reasonable question. Are dinosaur bones minerals? If so, they owned the dueling dinosaurs. If not, the Murrays did. The case went to the Montana Baez Supreme Court. Lawyers argued about the legal definition of mineral and whether a Tyrannosaurus rex qualified as a geological deposit or a piece of land. I'm not making this up. In 2020, the court finally ruled fossils are land, not minerals. The Murrays could sell. And in one of those rare moments where everything works out, the North Carolina Museum of Natural Sciences bought the specimen for an undisclosed sum rumored to be around $6 million, and immediately committed to studying it in public view. Which brings us to April 2024, when they cut the ribbon on the new exhibit. After 18 years in legal limbo, the dueling dinosaurs were finally available for science. And that's when things got interesting. Let's talk about what makes this fossil special. We're not just dealing with bones here. We're dealing with a preservation level so extraordinary that it borders on the absurd. The Tyrannosaurus is 98% complete, not an estimate, 98%. Most museum T-Rex skeletons are composites, multiple individuals assembled to look like one. This is a single animal with almost every bone present and accounted for, from the tip of its snout to the end of its tail. The Triceratops is nearly as complete, and both skeletons have something that almost never survives fossilization. Skin impressions. 
not scales, not fragments, continuous envelopes of fossilized skin, preserving the texture and pattern of their hides. In some areas, you can see individual scales. In others, the skin has that pebbly texture that makes you understand, viscerally. These were real animals with real skin that you could have theoretically touched had you owned a time machine and possessed spectacularly poor judgment. But here's where it gets forensic. Both skeletons show evidence of trauma. The Triceratops has healed injuries on its frill, those bony projections extending from the back of its skull. These aren't clean breaks. They're puncture wounds that scabbed over, filled with new bone, and healed during the animal's life. The spacing matches Triceratops' horn tips, meaning this animal had been in at least one fight with another Triceratops, probably a territorial dispute or mating competition, and survived. The Tyrannosaurus shows different damage. Some of its teeth are broken. Its ribs have fractures in various stages of healing. This was not a healthy animal. It had been through some things. Whether those things included fighting a three-ton herbivore with face swords is what we're here to figure out. And then there's the smoking gun, or rather, the smoking tooth. Embedded in the Triceratops skull, just behind the eye socket, is a tooth. Not a Triceratops tooth. They had hundreds of tiny grinding teeth in the back of their jaws for processing plants. This is a curved, serrated, puncturing tooth designed for one purpose, tearing flesh. It's a tyrannosaur tooth, and it's not just resting on the surface, it's embedded in the bone, with bone growth around it, indicating the Triceratops was alive when this tooth broke off inside its skull. Let that sink in. A Tyrannosaurus Rex bit this Triceratops in the face hard enough to embed a tooth in its skull, and the Triceratops survived. The wound healed. The animal lived long enough for new bone to grow around the foreign object lodged in its skull. If this were a crime scene, we'd call this evidence of assault. And because the tooth matches the Tyrannosaurus found right next to it, the same individual, based on size and tooth morphology, we have a suspect and a victim in the same location. Case closed, right? These dinosaurs fought, and we found them where they died. Not so fast. Paleontologists are professionally paranoid people. They've been burned too many times by specimens that looked like one thing and turned out to be another. So when someone says, the dueling dinosaurs, they immediately start poking holes in the story. Theory one, they were fighting when they died. This is the sexy interpretation, the one that makes headlines. A T-Rex attacks a Triceratops. The herbivore fights back with its horns. Both are injured. They collapse, exhausted, and are rapidly buried by a sandstorm or flash flood, preserving them in their death poses. It's dramatic. It's cinematic. It's probably wrong. Here's why. First, the T-Rex tooth in the Triceratops skull is a healed wound, not a fresh injury. That bite happened weeks or months before this animal died. Second, the actual poses of the skeletons aren't particularly combat-oriented. They're not locked together horn to jaw. They're lying parallel, like they both just fell over. Which dinosaurs do when they die, because gravity exists? Theory two, dinner time. The Triceratops died of natural causes, disease, injury, old age, the usual ways large animals exit the stage. The T-Rex found the carcass and started scavenging. While feeding, it either choked, suffered a sudden health crisis, or succumbed to whatever injuries it was already carrying, and died next to its meal. Burial happened afterward, preserving both animals together. This theory has merit. We know T-Rex scavenged. There's abundant evidence of Tyrannosaur bite marks on bones with no signs of healing, indicating the prey was already dead and the idea of a predator dying while eating isn't far-fetched. Modern Komodo dragons sometimes die after gorging on carcasses, either from choking or from infections caused by consuming rotten meat. Theory 3. Coincidence. Both animals died separately, hours or days apart, and happened to be in the same location when a flood buried them. 
Maybe this was a watering hole. Maybe it was a river crossing. Animals congregate in specific places, and when mass burial events happen, you sometimes get unrelated individuals preserved together. This is the boring theory. Nobody wants this to be true, including me. But it's scientifically plausible, and that's what matters. So how do we figure out which theory is correct? This is where 2024 comes in clutch. The North Carolina Museum didn't just put these fossils on display. They built an open preparation lab with windows where visitors can watch researchers work. It's part museum exhibit, part reality show, part ongoing scientific investigation. And they've been using every tool in the modern paleontology toolkit to interrogate these bones. Start with CT scanning. You've probably had a CT scan if you've ever had a serious injury. It's essentially a three-dimensional x-ray that lets doctors see inside your body. Same principle, but scaled up for dinosaurs. The team has been CT scanning individual bones, looking for internal structures that don't show up on the surface. They're finding damage patterns, stress fractures, areas where bone density changes, indicating healing or disease. They're mapping every imperfection building a complete medical history of these animals. One finding that just came out in late 2024, the Tyrannosaurus has evidence of osteomyelitis, bone infection, in multiple locations. This wasn't a healthy animal. It was struggling. Whether that infection contributed to its death is still being analyzed, but it adds weight to the scavenging theory. A sick T-Rex is more likely to rely on carrion than actively hunt three-ton prey. Then there's the chemical analysis. When bone fossilizes, trace elements from the surrounding environment get incorporated into the mineral matrix. By analyzing those elements, researchers can determine whether both animals were buried at the same time in the same material, or whether they fossilized separately and ended up together by chance. Preliminary results, published in a 2024 preprint, suggest simultaneous burial. The chemical signatures match. They were entombed in the same event. But the real game changer is the dating. Using high precision uranium lead dating of volcanic zircon crystals found in the same rock layer, researchers have pinpointed the age of these fossils to 66.897 million years ago, plus or minus about 25,000 years. That's absurdly precise for paleontology, and here's why it matters. This places the dueling dinosaurs within half a million years of the asteroid impact that ended the Cretaceous period. These animals lived at the very end of the dinosaur era, in an ecosystem under stress during the final chapter of their lineage's reign. They're also analyzing the skin impressions. Under microscopic examination, researchers are finding evidence of scales, but also something unexpected. Patterns that might indicate feather follicles. If confirmed, this would revolutionize our understanding of Tyrannosaur appearance. The debate over whether large tyrannosaurs had feathers has raged for years. The dueling dinosaurs might settle it. And then there's the nanotyrannus question. When this fossil was first discovered, some researchers argued that the smaller tyrannosaur wasn't a juvenile T-Rex, but rather an entirely separate species, nanotyrannus lancensis, a dwarf tyrannosaur. Others said that's ridiculous. It's clearly a young T-Rex and nanotyrannus doesn't exist. This debate has gotten surprisingly heated. Careers have been staked on it. The dueling dinosaur specimen, because it's so complete, has the potential to finally resolve this. Early analysis suggests juvenile T-Rex, but the team is being careful not to rush to judgment. They're examining growth patterns in the bones, comparing them to other specimens, building statistical models. The answer is coming. So what's the verdict? Did these dinosaurs fight to the death? Probably not. Sorry to disappoint. Based on the evidence available right now, the most likely scenario is that the Triceratops died first. Possibly from its existing injuries, possibly from disease, and the T-Rex found the body. While scavenging, the T-Rex either died from its own health issues or became trapped in the same event that would soon bury both of them. A flash flood, perhaps.
or a sandstorm that created a rapid burial scenario. Both animals ended up entombed together, their bodies protected from scavengers and decay by a thick layer of sediment that would eventually turn to stone. But here's the thing, that's not a less interesting story. If anything, it's more interesting, because it's real. The mythology of dinosaurs, the idea that they were constantly fighting, locked in eternal combat, nature red in tooth and claw, is appealing because it's dramatic. But actual nature is more complex. Predators don't always hunt. Scavenging is a valid strategy. Animals get sick. They struggle. They die in unspectacular ways. And sometimes, through sheer cosmic coincidence, those mundane deaths get preserved in such extraordinary detail that we can reconstruct them 67 million years later. The dueling dinosaurs prove something more important than whether dinosaurs fought to the death. They prove that we can catch behavior in the fossil record, that healed wound, that embedded tooth, that's direct evidence of a predator-prey interaction. It tells us that T. rex hunted Triceratops, that Triceratops could survive an attack and live to see another day, that these animals had complex dynamic relationships that went beyond simple predator-eats-prey narratives. It proves that dinosaurs were mortal, that they got hurt, that they healed or didn't, that they died, like all living things die. And sometimes they died in places and ways that gave us the gift of knowing they existed at all. And in 2024, for the first time in 18 years, we're finally studying this gift properly. The team at North Carolina is years away from publishing their final analysis. There will be papers, debates, conferences, arguments over interpretation, more CT scans, more chemical analyses, more microscopic examination of every square millimeter of fossilized skin. This is science at its most meticulous, but we don't need to wait for the final papers to appreciate what we already know, that these animals were real, that they lived in a real ecosystem in a real environment, facing real dangers, that one of them bit the other in the face and lost a tooth in the process, that both of them ended up in the same piece of rock, preserved so perfectly that we can see the texture of their skin. That is the actual miracle here, not the fighting, the preservation. The Hell Creek Formation, where the dueling dinosaurs were found, is a paleontologist's fever dream it's the last gasp of the dinosaur era, the final million years before the asteroid hit and changed everything. Every fossil pulled from those rocks is a snapshot of a world on the edge of oblivion, a world that didn't know it was ending. And this specimen, these two animals, frozen together in death, is the most complete snapshot we've ever found. We may never know exactly what happened in those final moments, whether the T-Rex died while eating whether they were buried alive, whether that embedded tooth caused the Triceratops' eventual death, or whether it was something else entirely. The fossils can only tell us so much. The rest is inference, interpretation, educated guessing based on the best evidence available. But that tooth, that single broken tooth wedged in a Triceratops skull, proves beyond any doubt that these two species interacted violently that T-Rex hunted Triceratops, that the iconic matchup depicted in movies and museum murals for decades, the one paleontologists were never quite sure was real, actually happened. The dueling dinosaurs don't prove that dinosaurs fought to the death, but they prove that they fought and survived, and sometimes died near each other in ways that look an awful lot like the dramatic scenarios we've been imagining since we were kids. And honestly, that's enough. If you want to see them yourself, they're on permanent display in Raleigh, North Carolina. The preparation lab is open. You can watch researchers work in real time. You can see the tooth embedded in the skull. You can stand in front of two animals that died 67 million years ago and realize with absolute certainty that this was real. They were real. And we're still figuring out their story.